D is equal to epsilon naught E plus B. The dimensions of D is actually T. It is polarization. D is polarization dimension wise. So if it is polarization, then why we are calling it electric displacement? That's the question. If it is polarization, why we are calling this electric displacement? What is meant by basically electric displacement? When displacement has occurred due to the field, due to the electric field. So displacement is occurring in what? In the charges. Charges are displaced by D and we call the thing polarization. So this will be the sum of this one plus this one. D will be the sum of epsilon naught E is with is P. But here this gives a clear message that D will be only dealing with free charges. So now understand this thing that what is D? You are what you are doing when you are applying the field. Let's say stretching has occurred. So what has occurred? Polarization has occurred. Right? Stretching has caused polarization. polarization. So this term is done. Polarization is done. But you know bending is occurring as well as the separation between the charges is increasing from the neutral from where the free charges are coming in means there may be the detachment of charges from the dielectric and those charges will be governed by the D. It will only count for those charges which are free. It is also called this free charge is also called the space charge. Right? Also called the space charge. So, now for a comprehensive picture, you should have the bending, you should have the movement as well as a whole, which will be in a non uniform field. So, for uniform, only bending can occur and that means the torque can occur and you can have the polarization, the stretching will be there plus there is a chance that there will be some free charges. Some charges will be freed from those atoms and those free will be counted by D. When you will solve some problems on finding the electric displacement we cannot find the electric displacement in vacuum. Why? Because in vacuum there, we say there is no material. So there is no polarization inside. When there is no polarization, then you are having this thing D is equal to epsilon naught E. So it is just, you can say, the electric field there. But whenever there will be polarization and you will be inside a dielectric material, the concept of D will arise. It will hold for the space charge. It will hold for the free charges there. Okay, so we say that uh, this one, we say that this is the equivalent form of Gauss's law in material. So this is actually Gauss's law inside a material and by applying the divergence theorem on this, I can write the closed surface integral d dot dA, the flux of these will be equal 
to the three charge enclosed. Now I hope by this time you will be able to directly apply the divergence theorem. Divergence of d, d tau will be equal to d dot dA and rho you can write is q d tau. So d tau, d tau will cancel and you will have the q effect closed. So this will be the dielectric, uh, this will be the electric displacement. Clear? Electric field you cannot find inside a material because for the electric field you should know the D inside the material whether there are some free charges and you should know the polarization as well. So when you are inside the material the equivalent thing for the electric field will be D. While you are outside of the material or you are in a free space the electric field will be E. So you are having D and D. This is only representing the material, the dielectrics. There are some terms like susceptibility, permittivity, dielectric constant. Okay. So these terms we can discuss that uh, P, the dipole moment per unit volume is written as epsilon naught chi E E and another term is there T is equal to epsilon naught chi E E now if you remember T was written as alpha times E so that alpha was the atomic polarizability and it was having some parameters for different materials we are having those polarizabilities but here this one this chi E is called the electric susceptibility susceptible what is electric susceptibility it gives you that how much a material can be polarized it gives you the degree of polarization of a material how easy is this to polarize a material the high value of susceptibility no, when it will be highly susceptible, very easy to polarize. Susceptible means uh, English word. We didn't do polarize. Well. Yes. So the it gives you the degree of polarization that how much the material is easy to polarize and it is dimensionless. We can write the value of this one is it is equal to this so I can just replace this equation the d equals epsilon naught e plus epsilon naught chi e and e and from here I can write like this one plus chi e and this is equals so I can write that D is equal to epsilon times E where you know the epsilon is the permittivity of the material not free space free space we are having epsilon naught now how do you define the permittivity Epsilon naught is the permittivity of free space, means we can. Permittivity, permission to the electric field lines. How much a material is permitting the electric field lines? That is the permittivity of free space. We know that this permittivity is inversely proportional to the electric field and the reason for it is 
polarization. The reason for it is that when you apply field to a material, it reverses its internal electric field or which we call the local electric field opposite to that one. That's why to the electric field this permission is behaving like resistance. One word permission is resistance. So it is resisting that electric field. Right? We write in the equation of electric field. You see here E is uh, 1 over epsilon naught times this E you can write is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Q by R square. So it is 1 over epsilon naught, not directly proportional because it is opposing the electric field. While in the magnetic case the situation is different. It is not opposing. Only alignment is caused and it is not opposing. So we derived the one of the equation of Maxwell and this is the Gauss's law equivalence inside a material. Now a little bit to discuss this divergence of D more. Divergence of D is equal to rho F. What does it mean? That D will always be diverging. It is non-zero. Whenever there will be free charges, there will be free volume charges. Divergence of D will be equal to non-zero. Divergence of D is non-zero. So what does it mean? When the divergence of something is non-zero, so it means it may be the result of a potential which will be curling, right? Which will be curling. But this thing, like divergence is non-zero, it means curl is equal to zero. Is here divergence was non-zero, so curl should be equal to zero. <coughs> if divergence is non-zero, so curl is equal to zero. But when curl of E was equal to zero, it was a conservative field, and we wrote E is the result of negative potential, right? Negative gradient of potential. Is this possible that this D can also be written as minus gradient of some potential, A potential pi? No, this is not possible. So, this thing we cannot write. Because this D is not the electric field. This E D is the result of electric field. That electric field has caused this one. Where it has caused this one? Inside a material. Out of the material it has no concept. Clear? So I think it is uh, sufficient for D.